move forward and talk a little bit about the experiments you conducted with the green tea extract okay. combination. Okay. Uh, you tested several cancers, but since our focus today is melanoma, could you uh, tell us a little bit about your results with the green tea combination against the melanoma cancer cell model? Sure thing. Um, we had we tested four melanoma cell lines because we know the melanoma carries different uh, genetic mutations in them. There are subtypes of melanomas, so we used the four cell lines to represent uh, some of the most common gene mutations. So um, one is called B ref mutation. The one the other one is called the ras mutation. And then the other one is P53 mutation. So there, there's a, these four cell lines that they either carry one or the combination of the mutations there. And then we found that the um, Uncle T, that's the green tea product we used, uh, killed, can kill like the cells, doesn't matter they carry the mutation or not. Now, current treatment for melanoma, a lot of targeted therapy, what we call targeted therapy, they target the BRAF mutation, which, uh, which are like about half of the patients have BRAF mutation. But the, for the BRAF wild type, who's not BRAF not mutated melanoma, those therapies doesn't work well. And then for the green tea, surprisingly, they work on both. So they work on either BRAF wild type or the BRAT mutated melanoma cells. So that's something that is exciting for me. That is exciting. And right. we found that uh, the green tea extract inhibited the proliferation of these, all these melanoma cancer lines. That's, that's right. Effective. Well, let's uh, shift then to our major focus today, which is uh, the potential of the yellow leaf ginkgo extract for melanoma. Uh, I think this is, can be described yeah. as a different approach. Uh, yeah. Could you comment a little bit about how this got started and your thoughts about how you took uh, the experiments uh, that you initiated? Uh, uh, what well, we uh, discussed, uh, John, you discussed with me about Dr. Bilginski's um, experiments on the RNAs, which is an enzyme that uh, degrade RNA in the cell. Um, that is significantly um, going up in some cancer patients, right? Melanoma cancer patients. And then uh, we're wondering whether the Jingo product, uh, the Jingo leaf extract, golden leaf, um, can inhibit those RAS. So then we, we are thinking about whether they are reducing these enzymes that the cancer cells secrete. Some of the enzymes are helping them um, to grow some of like angio, um, angiogenin, some of them will help like uh, cancer-related blood vessels to form, right? To supply the cancer uh, with, with new nutrients there. So if we inhibit those enzymes that is doing this, that will from another angle, pro, uh, you know, you, you could inhibit the tumor. So we go ahead to test whether first, whether this uh, product inhibit the total activity of of these kind of enzymes, they're called RNAs. Importantly, there are two enzymes we think is of very much interest. One is called DROSA, who control the microRNA production in the melanoma cell. And then there's another protein called angiogenin, which is secreted and basically works as a growth factor for the melanoma cells. So we found that the jingo, not, uh, the jingo leaf extract will inhibit uh, both of it. We're on the way of trying to quantify it, to see the significance of it, and to see what it does mean for, for, for the tumor inhibition. What is a takeaway? Uh, why should they be excited about this research and uh, could not wait to see the publication that is coming out? What, how is this, this is going to help them in their fight for cancer? Um, I think overall, there are a lot of interests in using natural products and then products from plants. And then um, first of all, a lot of them are used uh, as folk medicines or in the integrative uh, medicine field as anti-cancer. 
So my hope is these products, first of all, they are not toxic. You know, unlike most of the treatment, unlike, unlike most of the uh, chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Um, so hopefully they have much less toxicity. And then uh, very well tolerance. And then um, another way, so if this is working, it produces a mechanism that uh, will be additive to the standard therapy because those kill cancer cells and this can like inhibition new blood vessel formation or it can inhibit the uh, some other activities of the tumor cell like inhibit their, their movement, their, their metastatic potential and other things. So they can be complementary. I understand what well, you are saying that it is increasing the capacity of the cell to fight the cancer by itself and also decreasing the cancer itself to grow by being fed. So what I'm saying here is that on one hand, we see some of those critical enzymes going down, which normally will help the cancer cell to grow, will help them to get new nutrition. And on the other hand, we see this one RNS going up, which is an indicator for us. The crisis is there because the cell upregulate this specific enzyme to deal with it. But this would be another beneficial effect, am I right? If it holds up. Uh, right, if the stress holds up and then, yeah. I, was, I will have a last question. Based on both the research that you have done on the tea and now uh, on the ginkgo, what would you think of a preparation that would combine both ingredients? Preparation, you mean combined the tea, ginkgo, and... Uh... The tea and the ginkgo, yes. Because we are thinking of doing a topical approach, a cream uh, that mm -hmm. would contain both uh, uh, green tea and the ginkgo extract. With the tea, there are a lot of mechanisms studied with general green tea product, the EGCG and all that, you know, it's antioxidant. Um, it do, does a lot of things to inhibit cancer. What I can see is probably yes. I think they, they, it might be beneficial uh, because you're, you're, if you're targeting the cancer cell from two different angles, you know, they, com they uh, complement with each other. You, you probably have better effect. Thank you. Sure thing, thank you.